Okay, a little bit more on snubber circuitry. Got a three phase inverter there. And we've got the uh, three phase full bridge rectifier going on. And it's doing a nice job. You can see these little um, spikes that are there still. I'm not going to remove that because that would be that would probably kill the RGBTs. But these little spikes, if you notice, they spike up to around about the same point as the DC bus rail. So if I lower the voltage, you see they kind of follow them? So the peaks are the same as DC bus. If I bring the, the bus up. So you see the larger the DC bus, the larger the spikes. Now, if you remember the topology, what we had going on there, now remember, the uh, now it's essentially protected, but um, still, I don't. That looks ugly, doesn't it? Eh? You don't want to be looking at that, and that's going to cause noise on your circuitry. So we're going to put some very small um, capacitor snubbers, two hundred and twenty nanofarad capacitor snubbers over each RGBT. Uh, collector and emitter um, yeah because so because this um, setup here takes the energy and and essentially pumps it back into the DC bus um, if you if you imagine the higher the DC bus gets the energy has to rise to that point before it can start it can get absorbed by the DC bus because the DC bus, let's say for example, you've got um, 200 volts across these caps and you try to charge them to 210 volts. Let's say you're increasing your voltage. These aren't going to draw any current until you reach above 200 volts and then these will start to charge up. So that's, that's what you're seeing there. You're seeing the, um, the little spike shoots up to the DC bus voltage and then is and then is uh, chopped at that point. Um, so we don't really want that because it's... I don't know, it doesn't look too good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to take six of these snubber caps and I'm going to go between the collector and emitter of each... each, uh, so three there and three there. See, so I've got six of them and yeah we'll, and we'll have a look at the waveform once that's done and we should have a much nicer looking waveform you see there's a positive and a negative spike so if i take if i add one of these to the positive rail on my gbt3 see i've got rid of I've got rid of the positive one, but we've still got the negative spikes. I'll take that off. And it's all ugly again. So yeah, let's pop that on and and check what we've got after that. There we go. Now we've got our six just really small capacitors, one to each collector pin and one to each emitter pin to the negative bus and to the positive bus. So you see, there, 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 there. And now, that's better, isn't it? And I think she's ready to do some serious work now. So I think she's, uh, call her a she. <laughs> yeah, it's not a she, that's an it. Definitely an it. I'd like to show you something. I think it's ready to do. It's ready to do some serious work. So let's try some good voltages and see if it goes bang. That's the DC bus voltage there. DC bus is at 120 volts. Let's just get this in range. OK, 
Okay, looks looking all right. Get the time scale off there. Yeah, it's looking all right. It's a nice trapezoidal drive coming out of those IGBTs. Okay. What I'm going to do, what, what it's a good idea to do is when you're when you're doing your final test have a good sniff around for burning because when you when you turn that voltage up you can find all sorts of things happen like your uh, your snubber capacitors will suddenly get boiling hot or because they're dealing with so much current you might find that you're and by the way don't touch your buses unless you exactly know what you're doing. Your diodes might start getting hot or something like that. You know, your, your phase rectification diodes. Do you know what? It's all stone cold. Which is good. Well, that's cool. I'm quite pleased with that. And look at the current I'm drawing through this little ballast. Not a lot. Put some strain on the motor. That's good. So it seems to be switching quite happily at high voltage. Let's have a little look at some higher voltage. This is fun because you're literally waiting for something to go bang. 150 volts. Oh, there we go, 150 volts DC. Looking good. Still got a nice clean waveform there at that frequency. I got 160 volts on the DC bus. I'd say that's a success. I'm a little bit scared to go too much further tonight because I don't want my little my little ballast bulb to explode at 180 volts and I know what's going to happen it will shatter glass in my eyes <laughs> so ah, oh, do you know what sometimes it's hard to resist isn't it let's get up to 200 and I'll be happy still got nice clean waveforms I can't smell any smoke I'm pulling 110 milliamps on the IGPT drivers at 12.2 volts so they're okay. Got some serious RPMs. Let's go a bit higher. Seems happy. And the 80 mega 328p is doing a good job of commutating at high speeds. Give it that. There's no serial port running on it, so it's there's no interrupts running. Can't hit any grumbling going on. Can't smell any grumbling. Oh, we're switching at 200 volts. That's something. When you can switch at 200 volts, you know it's a decent controller. Well, for, for what it is anyway. I've still got nice clean waveforms there. What I'm waiting to happen is um, I'm waiting for these resistors to catch fire. As you can see, I've only got little five watt ones. Oh no, sorry, quarter watt ones. I'd like to touch them to see if they're getting hot, but I won't at this voltage. I won't go anywhere near it. 
Let's see if we can get up to mains voltage on DC bus. Two, I'm going to go for 220. 225. Now, it's strange. Your mind starts to play tricks on you. See, I thought I could see smoke coming out of this just now. <laughs> but I can't smell a thing. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Seems very happy. And we've got a nice clean... It's a nice clean waveform, I like that. Yeah, it's alright. Up to 2.30. So we can get up to 2.50 and then, I'll, then I won't go anymore. I don't think that motor can handle any more than 2.50. It is a mains powered volt, uh, motor. I think we're approaching the limits of what the motor can handle now. Oh, that's 250 volts on the DC bus. So I think, yeah, I think this inverter is good. I trust it now. Sometimes I just can't resist. I need to get to 300, I don't know why. My ballast is about to give out. Still got a good clean waveform. You can do it. Come on. I think the calls are saturated now. Yay, look at that. 300 volts on the DC. Beauty. Whoa. Whoa, Nelly. Right then, really quick, a three-phase snubber. <clears throat> got your three-phase cables here, and you've got your DC bus here. Now, so you're getting switching transients, or you want to rectify a three-phase BLDC motor. Um, if you're pulling negative on this one, it's going to pull up forward bias through that diode. But this diode is blocking. Sorry, this diode is blocking, so it can't get through. But it's going to pull up through this one, and say, for example, the green arrows push through this one. I'll go forward bias up there. Beautiful. And Let's say this scenario, the blue current, so this is now uh, positive and this one's negative. So this will go, this will current will pull up this way through the forward bias diode again to the positive, and this one where it's pulling will pull forward bias through this one. So no, basically with this, if you did this for any scenario, where you've got plus minus here, minus plus there, plus minus there, minus plus there, plus minus there, minus plus there. Any scenario you want, any possible scenario of current flow and current direction on any three of the cables will always result in a fully rectified uh, three phase into, into DC. So any possible scenario, it will always forward bias up and all flow in one direction, if that makes sense. So that's the little board in the middle. That's the rectifier. <laughs>